morning everyone, it's Jamie, and today we're heading to ATP CTP school. Hey guys, the day is finally here. We're headed off to the airport to go to Dallas, Texas for ATP CTP school. So uh, enjoy the views as we make our way to the airport. Alright guys, well I'm kind of settled in here, got my stuff put away, got my workstation set up over here. So I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of talk to you about what is ATP CTP. So this course is a week-long course that is specifically designed to take general aviation pilots, people that are used to fall, uh, flying smaller aircraft, and transitioning them and preparing them for their new job as an airline transport pilot. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's a oh, eight-day course. Uh, the first four days are going to be ground schools. We'll be doing uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It sounds like, and then um, we'll have three days of simulators, and that um, is going to get interesting. I don't actually have my schedule for it yet, but the way I understand it, there's going to be five two-hour sessions, and this can happen at any time during the day. So we might have an early morning, might have a late night, we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. And then on the eighth day, which is also the day I leave, um, I'll be taking the written exam for the ATP. All right guys, I'm all dressed and ready to go. Let's see what day one has for us. guys we made it to the end of day one so uh, just a long day we got there uh, about 8 a.m. this morning and we got out of there a little after 5 so a full day of classroom stuff um, I took notes here so I'm gonna kind of read you a list of the things we covered today I'm not gonna go into detail because you'll obviously learn that when you're here okay so um, 
the, the big thing they opened up with is why the ATP CTP course was started and why the 1500 hour came into uh, play. And there was just a, there were several uh, preventable accidents that happened, one specifically in uh, 09 in uh, Buffalo, New York, that kind of set all this in motion. Um, but we got there first thing this morning and they kind of showed us around the, the facility and uh, it's huge, it's really, really cool. Um, lots of sims, lots of classrooms. It's kind of a cool uh, feeling being surrounded by other pilots. Everyone's dressed up really professionally and just being in a really professional atmosphere. So um, I was super, super excited to get there. Well, uh, I'm not gonna lie, by the end of the day, I was doing a little, a little rough, little of this action. But that's all right, we're gonna do some more coffee tomorrow. All right, let me get to this list here. All right, so we started off with like the basic overview of everything, uh, went over the course outlines, that kind of stuff. Um, oh, real quick, a note on attire. I left this morning with a tie on and was fully formal, and I was uh, one of only a few that were uh, that dressed up, so uh, I lost the tie on button, the button, and uh, that was good enough for these guys. Um, let's see, what else did we do here? Um, went over types of energy. Uh, things like kinetic, potential, total, that kind of stuff. Um, went over power systems and how generators work and the backup, batteries, uh, ram air turbines, that kind of stuff. Uh, types of drag, induced, parasitic, total. Um, types of flaps and slats. Uh, that was a really cool section because they actually showed us some wind tunnel. Uh, footage so we got to see exactly how the air is separated and um, the different characteristics for uh, changing angles of attack in different flap and slack configurations. Um, let's see here. So I went over factors affecting lift, so mostly stuff you've seen before, but they applied it more to high altitude and high speed um, scenarios. Went over coffin corner and then angles of attack and all the different ways you could get yourself into trouble there and then how to recover. Um, went over high altitude stalls and low altitude stalls for swept wing planes. Went over V speeds, um, just kind of going over the, for people that may not have heard them before. Um, talked about different types of temperatures like total air temperature, static air temperature. Uh, talked about VMO versus MMO. Um, talked about compressibility of air, uh, again, just more stuff in the uh, high altitude aerodynamic range. Uh, talked about mock tuck and aileron snatch, uh, which I hadn't actually heard of before, but basically the 30 second version on that one is when the shock waves from uh, exceeding the speed of sound start to uh, make the aileron slap all the way to the stops up and down, it can create uh, an uncontrollable um, uh, scenario for you. So if you're a motorcycle rider like I am, um, there's a thing called a speed wobble. This is a speed wobble for ailerons. Um, let's see here. Uh, I talked about all the other stuff like uh, Dutch roll and turning and coffin corner all that. Um, talked about the different types of turbulence and turbulence penetration speeds. Um, talked about some weather associated with that like microburst mountain waves, lenticular clouds, those kind of things. Um, Let's see, we talked about different types of stalls and recoveries, both at high and low altitudes. Uh, we talked about icing and anti-ice equipment. Uh, we talked about upsets and what the difference between that and a stall is, and then uh, how to recover. Um, talked about wake turbulence and how they're restructuring the categories for that. So uh, that's something I hadn't heard. Uh, they've got a whole new system they're putting in place, so uh, you can look that up. Um, talking about wind shear, we talked about um, types of operations like domestic, flag, international, uh, supplemental, uh, charter, that kind of stuff. And then we did some uh, dispatcher familiarization. So it kind of showed us what the dispatcher at the company does and um, how we'll work alongside of them. So that's about all we did for today. Um, like I said, it's a lot of very interesting information but it is a lot of information. It's a very long first day. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this formal clothes, go get me some food, and uh, I may check in with you tonight. I may just uh, get you started on day two next. Hey guys, quick update. Uh, something I forgot to mention earlier. 
just about every one of those categories that we went over, they gave us a real world um, scenario that went with it. So you've heard the term that rules are written in blood. <clears throat> well, that's very much the case with these. For, say, Coffin Corner or Dutch Roll, whatever, for each one of those, there was a video or there was a case study or there was something. It seems like literally every rule that we learned about today, they had a corresponding um, loss of life. And um, it really kind of banged home the point that these rules aren't just kind of abstractly made up. They're there because somebody perished and uh, we don't ever want to see that happen again. Hey guys, it's the morning of day two. I got here a little bit early so I could hit the shepherds there and get some studying in. Uh, apologize for the noise, the airport's just across the way here, so you're going to get some jets and other stuff making noise. I wanted to talk to you about something that I saw this morning. Um, when I came down to breakfast, there was a whole gaggle of people, and they were kind of comparing notes on what they thought was going to happen in the training program. Um, and I just wanted to caution all of you, don't get caught up in the rumor mill. Everybody's got a brother's, sister's, roommate's plumber that's been through the program and they know exactly how it's gonna be. And ultimately we have about 20 people all coming up with outlandish claims that have exactly zero chance of being true because in the end it's just a compensation mechanism uh, that people use when they're trying to control a situation that they don't understand. So, you know, I heard things like, you know, 80% of people don't make it through the program. That's ridiculous, first off. I mean, what would the financial incentive be for the company if they had to pay to send us all to school just to send 80% of us home? That's dumb. Uh, they've already picked you. They want you to graduate. At this point, all you really have to do is not convince them otherwise. They'll tell you what they want you to know, when they want you to know it, and they'll get you through the program. Just remember, nobody wins if you don't make it through. So it's not in the interest of the company to try to fail a vast majority of people like that. So just take a deep breath, go through step by step, follow the program they give you, and do your best to stay out of the room and mill. All right, guys, we survived day number two. Um, it was another classroom day, so approximately eight hours of death by PowerPoint. Uh, always good stuff. Again, very interesting information and all valuable, just lots of it. So um, another highly caffeinated day to make it through that. Uh, we started off today with meteorology and uh, dealt with everything from thunderstorms to hail, St. Emil's fire. Uh, we got into more uh, specific information on equipment, so things like the radar and then like Nexrad, um, attenuation, those kind of things things that you may not have been exposed to in smaller aircraft. Um, got into wind shear a lot more specifically, including the equipment for uh, predictive equipment versus reactive equipment and how that's evolved over the years. Um, we talked about the TOGA features, uh, take off and go around. Uh, we talked about jet streams, ridges, troughs, microbursts. Uh, there were several cases of planes that went down uh, due to those. Talked about crosswind landings and jets and how you uh, can't do it the way you used to in the smaller airplanes because of the engines hanging down below the wings. So you end up kind of just crabbing all the way to the last minute and then ruddering over versus using your ailerons. Um, we talked about uh, reasons why pilots don't like to go around and why it's a dumb reason. No matter what the reason happens to be, you can always go around. It's always an option. Um, talked a lot about the hazardous attitudes attached to that. Um, talked about de-icing versus anti-icing and the different fluids they use for that and the different ways they can deliver that and what it'll buy you. Um, talked about um, the inflatable boots on the leading edges versus um, uh, bleed air equipment or some of the new ones that have electrical heating. Um, let's see, we talked about low visibility operations, uh, category approaches and landings, um, low vis taxing, there's uh, an ADSB um, or excuse me, a transponder-based uh, system for that so that they can track planes on the ground. Um, let's see what else. Talked about airport firefighting or ARFF, ARF. Um, talked about, um, let's see here, surface movement guidance and control systems um, or SMIGs. Uh, we talked about um, 
121 minimums for landing and IFR conditions, so like 121.651 and uh, 652 for uh, new captain minimums. Um, that, that was an interesting chapter because uh, Shepard's Air has several questions on this for the ATM test, but it uh, doesn't really explain why or how or where or any of that stuff. So it was kind of cool to get the, um, the explanations for those. Uh, we talked about autopilot systems and automation systems. Um, you know, uh, fail operational versus fail passive systems. Um, then we kind of tread it off into uh, physiology and medical. Uh, so we talked about fitness for duty, fatigue. Uh, they they had a whole section on crash pads and people that commute and people sleeping in crew lounges and why that's a terrible plan. Um, talked a lot about the FAA rest regs. Um, talked about the I'm safe acronym. You should have been exposed to that already. We talked about stress. Uh, we talked about a subcategory in uh, like bomb threats, hijacking, uh, law enforcement responses, things like that. Uh, then moved on to alcohol, drug uh, requirements and testing. Um, we talked about medical emergencies like hypoxia, depressurization, decompression, uh, maintenance failures, things that can lead to medical emergencies. Um, Kind of with the theme of everything else, if you just do what you're supposed to do, most of this would never happen in the first place. Uh, we talked about communications and how it can be a little different in a more complex jet and uh, doing some more complex uh, procedures. We talked about sterile cockpit. You should know what that is. Um, electronic distractions. Uh, we talked about all the reasons why all this fancy... Um, iPad and phone capability is actually hurting us more than helping us in some instances. Um, we talked about ACARS, DATIS, CPDLC, um, checklists, QRCs, QRHs, uh, challenge response um, format on checklists. Talked about uh, minimum equipment lists or MELs and then uh, finished off the day with uh, some crew resource management. So uh, that's all we did for day two. Day three, which I'm told is the longest day of the week. <laughs> Pray for me. Hey guys, end of day three. We survived another one. One more to go. Uh, we'll get through this list pretty quick. It was a little less uh, topic filled than the last couple days because some of these topics are pretty big and took up a lot of time. So uh, real quick, we went through uh, minimum equipment list, went through CDLs, which stands for configuration deviation list, which I had never heard of before. So that was kind of cool. Um, we talked about maintenance and write-ups and placards. Uh, we talked about pre-flight planning, um, particularly uh, taxi briefs uh, and uh, things like hotspots, airport lighting and low-vis situation, uh, situational awareness. Um, talked about uh, EFBs and the future of how they plan on dealing with that kind of stuff. Uh, we talked about uh, communication with ATC um, and how the FAA is cracking down on uh, unnecessary transmissions, things like that. I think most people have been guilty at one point or another of being a little too uh, colorful on the radio. Um, let's see here. We talked about uh, lighting systems. We talked about turbine engines for a really long time, so we went through the whole uh, shebang on that. Uh, if you'd like some more information on that, you can click up here and that'll get you uh, my video on turbines. Uh, we talked about bleed air, packs, AC, the accessory gearbox, uh, FADEX systems, um, <clears throat> engine instrumentation, things like temperature gauges, pressure gauges, stuff like that. Talked about ICAS, um, EPRs, uh, N1, N2, EGT, ITT, uh, engine start procedures and the different malfunctions you could encounter with that that uh, is also covered in the uh, turbine video I did. Um, let's see. Talked about compressor stalls, talked about uh, single engine operations, um, talked about weight and balance, did a lot of math, a lot of numbers for that. Uh, talked about performance limitations, looked at a lot of charts for that. Um, talked about runways, uh, specifically the 
types of surfaces, the different distances, things like Tora, Tota, SDA, LDA, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, we talked about the RCAM system where it talks about braking quality and the different numbers for that and uh, what that all means. Talked about climb performance, talked about obstacle clearance, uh, navigation, uh, flight path warning systems, things like uh, TCAS, TERSA, uh, EGPWS, um, TAWS, that kind of stuff. Uh, we talked about the display units, so like FMF, CDU, MCP, navigational display, primary flight display, that kind of stuff. Uh, we talked about um, Jepson charts and different types of SID, stars, approaches, in route charts, those kind of things. Um, and then we talked about the different uh, levels, so like LNAV, RNAV, RNP. Uh, we also talked about ADSB and then the MON system, which is going to be replacing VORs. So that was kind of cool. I hadn't heard that one yet. Uh, it talks about MON in the uh, Shepherd's Air for um, the ATM exam, but I didn't really know what it was. So we got all that explained today. And uh, yeah, for tomorrow, we're going to be doing a lot of HR stuff, just a little bit of schooling. And then we're going to be taking the... Uh, written test for the ATP course, not the ATM for your actual ATP license. So, um, unless something pops up, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, end of day four and also the end of ground training. So yay, on to the fun stuff. We're gonna start our sim stuff tomorrow. Um, what we accomplished today is we went over uh, leadership and advancement, the command structures, the companies, that kind of stuff. Um, went over appearance standards. Obviously they don't want people looking like slobs. Um, went over accountability. Uh, they talked a lot about uh, pilots and their inability to own their mistakes uh, and how they're trying to change that culture. Um, talked about ethics and professionalism, decision making, uh, ADM. Um, uh, we talked about airline pilot reputations and how they've done a lot of work over the last couple of years to try to repair those with the general public. Um, it doesn't take a lot of bad things to make a large group of people look bad. So even though on the whole most pilots are doing really well in life and not you know making themselves look like total uh, jerks, there are a few out there that have done some things that have made us look pretty horrible. Um, anyway, they're working on that. Uh, we talked about crew, crew resource management. Uh, we talked about line checks. Uh, we talked about human factors that contribute to mistakes and wrecks and things like that. And then also different types of reporting, things like NASA reports, LOSA, ASAP, those kind of things. Um, that was about it. We did some HR stuff, and then they uh, got us signed up for the FAA's ATM exam, which I'll take in three days, and then also got our SIM scheduled. Now, uh, I got lucky. I scored uh, morning to midday SIMs for the all three days. So I got really lucky. A lot of people in the class got like the midnight or the 02 or the 04 sims. And that's got to be miserable. So I'm, I'm super happy that I got the ones I did. I've also uh, met my sim partner. Seems like a really cool guy. Um, anyway, I'll uh, check in with you guys tomorrow and hopefully get you some cool videos of the sim if they'll let me. <laughs>finished up my first sim session it was pretty awesome um, we covered a lot of super basic topics that I kind of I guess I hadn't really thought about I thought they were kind of a given but uh, first and foremost just want to mention that 
if you've never been in a full motion sim before, it will mess with your stomach a little bit. It takes a few minutes to get used to it. You know, I didn't throw up or anything like that, but uh, definitely could feel it in my stomach uh, the first couple times we moved. Um, so we started with uh, taxing operations. So we did uh, a fair amount of taxing, including some uh, uh, diversions and uh, reroutes, things like that. We also did a uh, very low vis taxi, uh, just to kind of go over that stuff. Then we uh, spent probably, gosh, a couple hours uh, just going over rejected takeoffs. So just one after the other, uh, we things like uh, loss of an engine or um, loss of control or wind shear or uh, different things like that. Um, once we got done with those, we went on to some regular takeoffs and then we had some uh, malfunctions just after takeoff. Um, we got to play with the um, traffic resolution that was pretty cool, and then um, also the uh, ground proximity warning system. Uh, so that was uh, really cool. Uh, today we were in the ERJ-145, so the simulator czar assigned at random. Uh, this just happened to be what we're in. The one I'm in tomorrow will be the uh, 175, so uh, that would be cool because that would be my actual jet that I'll be flying. And then we're in the CRJs the, the last day. So um, we'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, just finished the second sim day. We did uh, two sim sessions today. Uh, we covered a bunch of different things. Uh, we started off with some unusual attitudes, and then we did some upset and stall recoveries. Uh, worked a lot with how to set up the uh, flight plan in the uh, MCDU, and how to work the autopilot. We did some high altitude maneuvers, uh, also did some recoveries from say Coffin Corner and stuff like that. Uh, and then we did a bunch of um, landings and approaches and category approaches and everything. So um, that's it for today. Here's a video of one of my approaches at the end. So we finished up the last of the sim sessions today. We did a lot of fundamental work, so how to program the FMS. Uh, all the way through, we, we did entire flights and also some amendments, got put into some holds, uh, changed approaches, uh, changed waypoints, just things that could happen in real flights. So we really worked on all the, the systems that work for the automation and then what to do when it doesn't do what you want it to do. Um, we also spent a lot of time on CRM and communication between the two of us. So we were given kind of a script for how the CRJ does their stuff and um, we went through all that stuff. The words will be a little different in the ERJ, but um, We'll get to that when we get to the company end doc. So um, we're done with everything. I got my uh, graduation certificate, so now I can take the FA written test for the uh, ATP. It's uh, the ATM test um, in the morning. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Hey 
Hey guys, we wrapped up the last day of ATP CTP today. I took the written exam and ended up with a 97%, so super excited about that. Um, I'm now at the airport uh, getting ready to head back home. I uh, can't wait to see my wife. So if you guys have any questions, comments, thoughts, ideas about the video, by all means throw them down in the comments section. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button and uh, share with your friends. I would really appreciate that. Um, until next time, guys, see you later. And remember, it's never too late to be what you might have been.